question. I want to throw it out to the group. Yeah, with this tight job market right now with uh, nearly zero unemployment, what do you guys do from your establishment to recruit and then once you hire the employees, retain employees and really differentiate your companies from competitors? I think Naj, you have great. You have great. Can you, uh, sure. Naj, take it away. So, She's so good. Um, I'd say the first thing you want to do is think about the personality you want to hire. Food service, everything can be taught. You can teach someone how to grate the cheese to put on your pasta, or how to grill that sausage, right? But you can't teach the genuine connection. You can't teach how to properly say thank you with a smile before they leave your restaurant. You can't teach that personality trait that we look for when we're having that awesome restaurant experience. So you look for that personality and ensure that when you're hiring the individual, you're hiring them for a future role that you can see them in, not hiring them so they can leave you in six months. One of the largest cost factors that a lot of restaurateurs don't take into consideration is, what does it cost you to hire and lose an employee? And unfortunately, in our space, there's a lot of turnover. And so you can mitigate that by looking at the pool that you have and making sure that they're meeting the personality traits that you're looking for and then the skill traits later. Now where you look for them is also an opportunity. I would suggest going to Craigslist, I would suggest going to some of the job boards where you have those young adults looking, seeking for their first opportunity or their second job out into the marketplace. You're not hiring people that are going to go work at Google next year. And you have to remember that as you go through the interview process. Another thing I would suggest is making sure you meet them more than once to confirm the consistency of the personality traits and the characteristics that you're looking for. Are they dressed appropriately? Are they looking at you? Are they smiling? Are they happy? Do they wake up happy? Those are really important factors when you want to put someone in your restaurant to represent you and your brand and the delicious food you plan on serving. I'm, I'm going to just add to that too, Naz. It's awesome. And one of the things too, when you're running your restaurant, sometimes you don't feel you have the time to actually meet the person that you need to hire. Like, I need to fill this role. You walk in, you have a heartbeat here, fill up the application, here's your apron, put your hat on and get in the kitchen. And, and that doesn't um, allow for success. So it's really important that if you're going to meet someone, have a time that's good for you. We do like between 2 and 4 in the afternoon for interviews if someone's walking in. And also live the model that you want to create. So if you want a happy, fun, friendly person, you should be that person, right? You have to be genuine when you're hiring someone. And if you're not, they're going to see right through it. because say, hey, we have this great culture, you know, we're happy. And then you come in and you're miserable, right? Or you're yelling and screaming. So as a restaurateur, look in the mirror at yourself, maybe having a really stressful day. And it's okay to even say, you know what? Dishwasher didn't show up. My dishwasher, my, my, my floor sinks backed up. It's okay to have issues, but also when you're meeting someone, make sure that you, you, you model the role you want to fill. So if you want someone that's going to be kind and genuine, you must be kind and genuine too. So I'd say if you're, if you're hunting for people and, and uh, team members in Los Angeles, it's really, really difficult right now. Um, and so you know, the pool that you're fishing in uh, is, is very important. Unfortunately, right now, a lot of that pool is either finding restaurant employees from other <clears throat> restaurants that are already employed or Craigslist. Craigslist seems to still be the, the number one source where we get a lot of our applicants in. And we use Harry, H-A-R-I, uh, sometimes too, which is kind of a LinkedIn for hospitality. And it yields some results now and then. We use them for the onboarding. The thing I think that's really important about when you're posting on Craigslist is to make sure that you have a, a post that differentiates your restaurant and the values that you're going to want to see. And so we, we talk about it in terms of making sure that our job description describes what success looks like in each position that we're hiring. And we only hire a front, like a, a base front of house and a base back of house, and then everybody goes through the rungs of the ladder in training process. But um, not describing the qualities that you'd like to have, because when somebody's reading a job description, yeah, they think they're generous and outgoing and lovely and hospitable. Um, but if you're able to describe what success looks like, 
in the job description or the job posting, then it becomes your job description and it becomes also the standard which you can hire or fire, or rather promote or terminate against too. Will so. you put those actual attributes then in the job, the Craigslist? Um, no, I wouldn't say that I want somebody that's uh, friendly because everybody thinks they're friendly. Yeah. So how do you do that? Uh, Good question. Yeah, yeah. No, we tell what we, we want to define it. What success looks like. So everything we phrase is success looks like we're able to bust these tables. We're always able to keep a clean restaurant. We're able to bust tables within two and a half minutes of the guest leaving, or um, we're able to tackle uncomfortable situations with customers and turn, you know, uh, complaining customers into raving fans. Or what what these attributes are, and that also. It's a little bit maybe more sophisticated of a uh, posting, but it challenges that person to think about it so that we just don't get, because you know people flood thousands of resumes to every listing and they'll just take whatever you know the first person to call them is. And so we're trying to at least make the bar a little higher so that they want to be there. But it is very difficult in these times of low unemployment for sure. I like to add something. What, what I see our team doing is we try and avoid what uh, one of our executives called warm body syndrome. So we all talked about the positive of hiring, right? Look for people like this. But you're not always going to find them. Your job when you don't find them is not to hire them. If they're the not the right person, don't hire them. And you have to remember that because all of our problems come from those warm body people. And you just get them because you have to have them and then you have a major problem. So we try and avoid that. And when it comes to looking for things with people, what we want to look for is what Joe and everyone was describing, that happy person. You can have it in your ad, that's great, but that's not where you're gonna get those people. You're gonna get those people when you are sitting there interviewing them and you're judging how is, what is their attitude? Do they look you in the eye? Do they smile? Can they communicate with you? Can they talk to you? Are they responsive? Are they friendly? Are they charismatic? Right? You need to see that in your employees. Imagine you're the guest, and if you don't, ask yourself, do I want this person working for me as a front of house server? Are they going to sell wine for me? Are they going to sell this? Probably not, right? If you don't see it now when they're trying to get the job, you're not going to see it later. I guarantee you, if you don't see it in the interview, you won't get it later. Remember that. Now, when it comes to the back of house people, you still want a great attitude, right? They're not gonna be interacting with customers, but they're gonna interact with who? Each other and your guests. And then you have a company culture. Who creates the company culture? Well, in large part, you as the owner operator, but these people have this pocket veto. They can do anything they want and fight that culture. So you've gotta get even the right back of house people. They've gotta have a good attitude. They don't have to be as outgoing, but you, they gotta have a great attitude. That's what you should be looking for. And you can train for everything else. Uh, I, want, I want to briefly comment, we hire a lot of people off of Indeed and Craigslist as well. And one of the things one of our top managers likes to do to differentiate us is he likes to sell the company to the people that he interviews. He talks about internal promotions. He talks about the training we'll provide for you. He talks about the benefits we provide to people, and they are good benefits. And that's what they need to understand that they're receiving if they come with you. So he markets the company to them and tells them what a great place we are to work and how you can go somewhere with this company. That's what I'd say. And it's from working with our team. And on that too, reference checks. I think reference checks are the, like, the lowest hanging fruit to filter out a lot of uh, people because a lot of those resumes are, are fluffed. I mean, I'd say 99% of resumes are fluffed. So checking in, and then if it's a higher level some, somebody, we do psychographic tests on them. You can use Lighthouse or Psymetrics. Um, they're relatively low cost, and we've built a manager profile. And you can't really, you can't really fake it through those tests. They they will give you good insight into how managers will handle certain situations, or uh, or what their characteristics are really like. Joseph, that, that's why I didn't get the job with you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that psycho? <laughs> 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 